Morning, Carl. Charles. You know uh, DCI Barrowclough, of course. Hello again. Well, I wasn't expecting her. I have permission to examine the will as soon as it's been read. Can't it wait? It might be an important piece of evidence. I don't see why. Well, I didn't think you'd object. I know how anxious you and the family are to get a result. You could have left us alone. Today of all days. You'll have to forgive him. We are all feeling a bit sensitive after yesterday. Don't worry, I understand. I'll just have a quick word with Mrs. Uh, King on you. Excuse me. I wonder if you'd mind DCI Barrowclough sitting in on the reading of the will. What on earth for? <laughs> Look, emotions can run a little high on these occasions. You've said yourself you're all a bit on edge and her presence might have a calming effect. Since she's here anyway. Well, I suppose if you put it like that. It's in your best interests. Uh, would you excuse me for a moment? Oh, could you? Yes. Shall I take a cup? Thank you. Mm. And, uh, What's Claudette doing here? Uh, Charles asked if she could attend, and I agreed. You'd no right to do that. Well, apparently it's to keep us under control. What? Oh, I know it seems ridiculous. I didn't see any reason to object. I mean, she's going to take the will away as soon as we've read it. But I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> it's evidence, apparently. Listen, if you're uncomfortable with her being here, I shall ask her to leave. You should have asked us first. You're right. I should have. I'm sorry. Chief Constable, I owe you an apology. Not at all. I had a few glasses of wine, got out of hand, and it was unforgivable. <laughs> it was Tom's funeral, I understand. So you're not going to slap the cuffs on me? <sighs> not this time. Come on up, Phyllis. Hey, I wasn't expecting you. Well, Mr. Rawlings asked me to come. Apparently, Mr. King's left me something. Ooh, so you'll be in the south of France this time next week. Don't be ridiculous. Now, listen, I want to know what everyone gets, so mind you pay attention. For once in your life, can't you show a little bit of decorum? Listen! Morning. Good to see you, Geoffrey. Rosemary. And we met yesterday. Yes, we did. Right. Um, I thought you could sit over there. It's all right. I didn't know you were coming today. He didn't ask. I don't get it. What's going on? Well, we'll all find out soon enough. To my valued friend and trusted employee, Edna Birch, I give my fountain pen, my carriage clock, and the sum of £5,000. Oh, I didn't expect... To my aunt, Phyllis King, I give the sum of £20,000 and the pocket watch left to be by my father. To Carrie Nichols, I give the cameo brooch, pearl necklace, and the gold cross and chain of my late wife, Mary. In the matter of home farm, I give one quarter share of the property to each of my sons. Uh, that can't be right. It must have been written before Max died. If I may proceed. In the matter of home farm, I give one quarter share of the property to each of my sons, Matthew, Jimmy and Carl King, on condition that my wife, Rosemary King, can live there in perpetuity. What? It doesn't make sense. In disposal of my business assets, I give all my interest in the company known as Home Farm Estates to my wife, Rosemary. I can't be right. It was hers as long as my dad was alive. That was all. Your late father's wishes are very clear. Oh, I get it. You went with him to change the will. Did you stand over until you got what you wanted? I had no idea Tom was going to leave me the estate business. <laughs> you expect us to believe that? But I wasn't even in the room when he made the changes. I can confirm that. Now, if you don't mind, in respect of the company known as King & Sons, I leave all my interest in the business to my trustee, Charles Vaughan, to hold on trust as follows. Firstly, to pay all liabilities and arising debts from the business known as Home Farm Estates. Thereafter, for my 65% share of the company, I give 25% to my son Matthew 
I give 10% to my son Jimmy and I give 20% to my son Carl. As a result, Matthew will control 35% of the company and Jimmy 30% and Carl 25%. But what about the other 10%? You paid your debts off on home farm estates, but that wasn't enough for you, was it, you conniving bitch? That's enough. He gave you the other ten, didn't he? You've known about it all the time. I assure you, I haven't. Don't lie to me! I suggest you calm down. Mr King, if you cannot control yourself, I shall have to ask you to leave the room. Come on, man. In respect to the remaining share of King and Sons, I make the following bequest. I give ten percent of the company to Scarlet Mary Nichols. Who? I also give her a quarter share of Home Farm. What are you going on about? These gifts are to be held in trust until Scarlet's 18th birthday by her mother, Carrie Nichols. This doesn't make any sense. Why would he give all that to your daughter? Think about it. Scarlet Mary Nichols. No. Can't be. Tom was her father. She's your sister. You can't expect us to believe this. It's a pack of lies. You and Dad. If we had a sister, we'd know about Tom her. didn't want you to know. I'm sorry. Sorry? <laughs> sorry don't even come close. I'm not having this. It's doing me head in. You are not entitled to a penny. We don't even know if this daughter exists. Oh, she exists. You can't prove that she's her sister. I've got proof. I knew you would say that, wouldn't you? It's true. There's documented evidence of paternity. No. No. Well, why didn't he tell us? How could he do this to us? 